My name is James Buckland. I am applying for a Bachelor of Acting at Whopper, and these are the uh, monologues I have chosen. This one is Runt. <clears throat> you know, it's true. I repel them. I take a step forward, then, and they reel back. I disgust them. I can tell that. I hate my guts. I get so far like once when I managed to convince a girl, a really nice girl who I met on the net, on the net to come and meet me and have a drink because we'd been toing and froing for weeks and got to know one another a bit and I liked her and uh, she liked me. Or so I thought. I waited for her in the bar. A nice bar. It only cost $10 for a stubby of beer. And I saw her and I stood up to show her I was there. She scanned the room, searching for me, and I could see how she looked gorgeous, really, but not too gorgeous, not out of my reach. Someone who could possibly quite like me. <laughs> she had a lovely smile, and she was excited to meet me, I guess. And then I saw, and then she saw me, and then the smile just went away, and so did all the excitement, and I could see that it wasn't me or anything like me that she'd imagined. She pretended she was looking for someone else. And she just qu turned quickly, walked out, and I didn't, go, I didn't bother going after her. I thought, no. Fuck her. She's, she's just like all the rest. The next monologue is from Macbeth for the Shakespeare. If it were done, when tis done, then twere, well, it were done, quickly, if the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his Circe success. That but this blow might be the all and the end all here. But here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here. That we but teach bloody instructions, which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poisoned chalice to our own lips. He's here in that doubtful trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then, as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties to meek. So meek hath been. So clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking of. And pity like the naked newborn babe, striding the blast or heaven's cherubins, horsed upon the sightless courier of the air shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, that tears shall down the wind. I have no spur to pick the strides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. <laughs>